<coughs> All right, today we are in VS Code, not yet. We are in VS Code, and I'm uh, checking out how to create APIs in Rust. Remember, I have never created APIs in another, any other language other than JavaScript and TypeScript. So this is very new for me. This is all very new for me. The lower level implementations are very, very new for me. I had never seen anything like this before, but this is normal practice. I'm assuming in all the other object oriented programming languages, uh, Rust is not an object oriented programming language, but still I think this is the best practice. So uh, what I've learned is that uh, you can configure all the data about your API. So the port number on which your API is going to run, the host, the database, where the database is going to run, you know, things like that. Since this is my uh, learning project, I've decided to take the database in the same um, machine as my API since it's not going to go anywhere anyways. So details about my database and applications uh, is in the same file and then I load it into my main file uh, where the entry point of the application lies this thing run the run function is the entry point it comes from another file but the point is that I need to print out my configuration I want to know that my program is reading my configuration file so here we go I have now run the program and we are waiting for it to start hopefully it will all right, it is working now, but we are not printing out anything. We are not printing out the configuration. And let me show you that the configuration is actually connected to my app. So let's do cargo watch and run this. So every time I reload my file, any file, when I save it, it will reload. So let me go to my file and let's go to YAML. So right now it is running on 3000 port 3000 let me change it to 2000 and you'll notice that the port changes as well on 2000 and we can prove it uh, by going into our http client and let's go here and yeah let's do that all right so it's working on port 2000 earlier it was working on port 3000 and that's how i've configured so now we know that the configuration file is loading if we go to the main file and we see all right um, this is where we put the port and the port is coming from config.unwrap application.port a configuration over here from which the port is also coming so let's print the configuration right now let's do that and do that and as you can see our program has been refreshed let's change it a little bit let's change the command all right so here we are we are getting our final settings uh, these are settings and database and we are getting everything and this is obviously fully typed because this is rust we don't it's not javascript so what we want to do is we want to load a new set of uh, credentials so for example since this video is going to go on youtube let's create a youtube.yaml file youtube.yaml and i'm going to show you how i'm going to load everything and how it's working right now let's quit our server right now Let's clear it. Let's turn off the terminal. Let's use YouTube. Then we are going to write name. Well, you must be wondering, uh, what is the file that you're already reading? What is this? What is OK, final settings, this? Where is this information? This information is right here in the configuration.yaml file. Over here, I'm loading this to my configuration.rs where I'm using the config create to create a builder and I'm adding the source uh, to a new file and this is the configuration.yaml file. So I have to provide the name and the file format of YAML. So it probably passes it to be configuration.yaml and then it looks for the configuration.yaml file in the root directory and then it adds it and passes it in its object, in its config object, in its native config object that is given to me by the config library in Rust. Then I use the config.try deserialize to deserialize that information that I pass from over here into my struct, into a Rust struct. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm going to uh, take settings and I'm going to take the po uh, putting it into final settings. So application takes settings, which is port and host, the same configuration as my YAML file and database settings takes username, password, port, host and database name, same as my configuration.yaml file so now i have to create another struct uh, 
called Bugstruct YouTube. Add it to our. We can now add YouTube to our final settings. Pub. Now we need to think about this. Since YouTube is the parent of these both, uh, in, we need to put YouTube in the final settings so it is able to read this properly. YouTube will, does not implement the debug trait. Let's implement it then. All right, now everything should be fine. Let's go to our configuration youtube.yml everything is fine so what is happening in our configuration.rs file now is that it will add source for the configuration file but it is not adding the source for the uh, youtube file let's add the source for the youtube file add source and run it and now we have the youtube and it takes in name shitij and numbers 8790 so that's how i'm using the config to configure my API.